I'm going to talk about Flexbox, which is a CSS layout mode. And basically what Flexbox is, is it's a, a set of properties that CSS provides for us for laying out and aligning elements and then distributing space among those items um, inside of a container. Um, one of the features that's really good about Flexbox that, um, is that it allows us to align items both horizontally and vertically. And it's also really helpful um, in dealing with like responsiveness and adjusting screen sizes. So my goal is just to give you a little bit of an overview of Flexbox and some of its properties. Um, let's see. So a lot of these, I have, I'm going to have a bunch of examples. Uh, most, almost all of them start with just like a, a parent container, a div with like six child divs inside, and just some very basic non-Flexbox CSS just to so you can see the, the different boxes. And this is what, what that looks like without any Flexbox. So basically, if you want to set up a Flexbox container, you go onto the parent element, the parent div, and you set, just set it to display with a property of the display property to flex. And that gives you a bunch of kind of default settings, which we'll kind of talk about here. Um, so this is what it would initially look like. Um, it'll basically, like the defaults, will lay it out on a horizontal line in the order that they're in your source code. Um, it'll, they'll lay out horizontally from left to right. And um, if they have any width properties already set, height and width properties, they'll, it'll respect those. And if there's not enough, not enough space on one line, it'll, it'll shrink them down and um, fit them on one line. Um, so in order to understand some of the properties, the, for the next one we're going to talk about is flex direction. Um, this is a chart, like a graphic from the Mozilla website. And basically when you set the flex direction, the default is row, which means you're essentially setting the main axis. Um, the horizontal axis is the main axis, so your, your items inside of your parent container are going to lay out horizontally. Um, starting from the left and ending at the right. If you did row reverse, you'd basically flip so that the starting point would be on the right side and they'd lay out across the other way. Um, if you set the direction to column, you're setting the main axis to be the vertical axis. And then whatever's not the main axis is the cross axis, which will come into play in a, in a minute. Um, so basically, this is the default. Flex direction set to row is the default, so nothing really changed by setting that property there. Um, and if you set flex direction to column, you change the main axis to the vertical, so everything aligns to, uh, straight up and down. If you set, um, so a quick note, if I, I was setting like a, I was setting default, a uh, default, uh, width of 50 pixels here. Um, if you take that off, if you don't have a if you don't have a width set, the cross axis, the elements will expand to fill up the available space in the cross axis. So I took off the width of 50 pixels so they fill out the whole the whole horizontal space there. Uh, row reverse is. So this is now the starting point, and everything lays, lays out across back that way. And column reverse is the same way. Lays, uh, they go up and down. So the next property is justify content, which basically defines how you align your flex items along the main axis. Um, so the default is flex start. So again, we're basically all defaults here. Um, the main axis is set to row, so we're going to lay out across. Um, if we change to flex end, they'll push all the way towards the end, which is this point over here. If we switch to column, we're at flex start, so we're at the starting point of the column and going down. And then flex end, we go down to the push down to the end of the column of the axis. So another, uh, another value you can use is space between, which basically sets the first item and the last item to the starting and ending points of the main axis and then distributes the space between, between the elements evenly. Um, 
and that's what it looks like on the column. And then space around is similar. It said it basically sets a, a unit of margin, basically, is you, how you can think of it, on each, on each side of each item. So there'll be one unit on each end and then two units in between each one. And uh, so the next property is called is align items. Um, and it basically defines how items are laid out on the cross axis. And they default to stretch. It defaults to stretch. So if I comment out the height here, the, the main axis is horizontal. The line items is how things lay out on the cross axis. Here's the vertical axis. And the default is stretch, so they'll stretch to fill the whole cross axis. Um, so I took it off of here, align items is now set to flex start. So it's basically kind of that starting position again. Um, so now the, we're still horizontal is the main axis. So we're now in the center of the cross axis, which is the vertical axis here. And then you can go, I guess that's all we're doing for that one. Uh, <laughs> so, so the next property is flex wrap. So flex items will try to fit on one line. If they, they want to be, they'll fit on one line if they can. The default of flex wrap is no wrap. Um, so if, so basically what, what happened here is the width is set to 30%. So you'd expect that all these items wouldn't fit on one, on one row here. Um, but since flex, the flex wrap default is no wrap, they kind of squeeze onto one row. They shrink down into one row. Um, so here I set it to wrap. And now they can expand to their 30% width, and they just kind of wrap around um, onto a new line. And so you can imagine this being like a grid of a bunch of items, maybe like a bunch of pictures or something like that that'll just keep wrapping. Um, so here's basically the same thing, but I added a justify content of, with a value of center, which now centered it on that the main axis, which is the horizontal axis. So it's a little looks a little nicer. And <clears throat> so the next property is align content, which basically um, this, al this allows the container to, to it, it's how the container manages space between multiple lines. If it, all, it has no effect if there's only one line of items. Um, and so let's see. So here, I, I basically set a width on the container to 300 pixels. And I took off the height that was 50 pixels, so they'll stretch. And um, so now they're still centered, but now they're stretching. This align content stretch is stretching the length of the, so they fill up the entire cross axis. Um, so here, <coughs> I put the 50 pixels back on. Um, so what I did, what's going on here is now align content to center. So we're aligning the multiple lines on the center of the cross axis, which is the vertical axis. And we also have the justify content center, which is the horizontal axis. So it's centered, which is something nice that's kind of hard to do sometimes with floats and clears and all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then another way you can do centering with Flexbox is um, just simply with display flex on the parent. Flex wrap to wrap is just because we have multiple lines uh, for now. But and then margin auto. And if you do that, it basically it basically distributes the space, all the margin around all the items evenly. It's easier to see with just one line of items. You see they're in the middle here, and the space is distributed pretty evenly. And then it's really easy to see with just one right in the middle, which is cool. And again, it's just display flex on the parent, margin auto on the item, and it's perfectly centered inside of the container. <coughs> um, I don't really have much time to talk about this. So those were all properties you'd put on the, on the parent container. I don't really have much time to talk about these properties for the children. But there's just like a few like order 
flex grow, flex shrink, align self, which are basically ways for to override the default that the default alignments of of uh, one particular item. So I mean, you can see like you know the three here is bigger, and here the oops. You know, the, you can take the three out of alignment from the other one. So there are properties that the children can use to kind of have their own default, I mean, their own particular styling. Um, and that's it. With Flexbox, you can do a lot of really cool stuff. You can nest Flex containers inside of Flex containers with different elements and create some pretty cool layouts. So it's worth checking out. Thank you. <laughs>